Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought the second part of our new series, Rise Above. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thanks. Yeah, what a great message today as we moved in First Peter. Last week we talked about the living hope, mm -hmm. and this week we talked about how to live victoriously in mm -hmm. that. And I'm just going to jump right into the questions Good. that we got. Right. Um, this person said, great message. Um, help him understand how it ties back to the rise above, how you relate sure. it to what's happening in the world. Right. Okay, so I think that the temptation is for us as Christians to live in this world that often feels like it's unraveling in a way that could be described as defensive. It's like we're playing defense. The walls of the world are closing in. The nation's closing in. My life's closing in. I'm on defense. I'm on defense. I'm on defense. So help me rise above, you know, extend to me that arm that pulls me up. That was last week. Um, where we sort of are the passive agents of this hope that he infuses to us um, if we'll but step into, through Christ, that living hope. Now today, he's taking us, and next week too, he's taking us from uh, being on defense to now you're on offense. Mm -hmm. So now that you are this person of hope, um, because of the living Christ and you've stepped into that living hope. Now, here's how we're going to live. So change your mindset from what are you going to do for me, God, this week to, okay, this is what he's done for me. So now here's how I'm going to live. And here's how I'm going to let my light shine in the workplace and everywhere else that my life might sparkle, that there will be this quality of distinctiveness and holiness to it that others might be drawn to Christ and that I might help them to rise above because my life's being transformed. My mind's being transformed. My lifestyle's being transformed. And so uh, I think in short, we got to move out of this mindset of I'll just sit here and the Lord's just going to sort of keep pulling me up again another week. Well, no, finally we got to move to offense mm. and say, Good. here's how I'm going to live now. The, the, the life in Christ that he offers. That's good. Okay, so the next question that came around is what if during this lifestyle change there is an obstacle, um, whether it's a spouse or a child or a parent or someone that you're in a relationship with that keeps pulling you back to the other track? Mm -hmm. Besides prayer, how does the Bible say we can handle this? Sure. Well, besides prayer, that's a big one. Let's be in prayer and personal devotions like we were talking about. I would say community. Mm -hmm. Who is your community? Who are the ladies, if you're a lady, or the men, if you're a man, um, that are encouraging you and helping you to stay on uh, the road that Christ has for you and not to, to be uh, lapsing back. Now, the challenge comes with the obstacles mm -hmm. uh, because some obstacles we can control. Um, if you're in a workplace, that is telling you, you must do unethical things, dishonest things, um, untruthful things, you can change that. You, you, you can't change them maybe, but you can change your job and just go get you another job. On the other hand, if you're a child of a parent or parent to a child or spouse to a spouse, we can't change that so much. Yeah. So, uh, and conveniently, we're going to get to it, not till uh, at the end of the summer, but Peter's going to write to the husbands and the wives, and particularly to the wives in 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7, he's going to talk uh, to, to the wives because there was a lot of Christian wives who were saying, you know what? I got Jesus. I love Jesus. This dude... He still doesn't, he doesn't get it. Can I just be done with him? And Peter's gonna say, no, stay in that marriage. This is your context for living this Christian life. And you can let your light shine and you can have an impact on him. And maybe by your sparkling life, he'll come to saving faith in Jesus. So no, you can't just dump him. Um, 
And, and so th I think the challenge for us is that while, yes, there are some things that we can change and maybe should change, uh, like the job illustration I gave, many aspects of our life are going to have obstacles. Mm -hmm. But what's new about that? That's what the early Christians had. They had real obstacles, like maybe today I'm going to get my head chopped off. I can't change that. So here's how I'm going to live for Christ with the hours that I've got today. And if he gives me another day, I'll do it again tomorrow. And so I think that, it, and, but since I brought up the marriage, let me just bring maybe one caveat. And that is sometimes there is a spouse situation where there is abuse. And, you know, uh, and I would say in, in that situation, let's pull off to the side of the road and, and uh, let's get you to a safe place sort of like young, eventually, King David when he was playing the harp that day for King Saul and Saul got all irate and started throwing spears at him. And it was at that point David said, I've got to, I got to go. And so I, I would add that caveat just on the outside chance, I hope outside chance that we're talking about a spouse here and there's r real abuse um, that's, that's, that's going on that's dangerous. Other than that, we've we got to live our life in the context that God's put us, and we can't make it all smooth. Mm -hmm. um, we'd like to, but n none of the Christians throughout history ever got to do that. All right. Neither do we. Neither do we. Okay, so here's the last question that I had that came in. Okay. So um, how does this scripture apply to um, what this person is calling super religious Christians who are devoted to the activities of Christianity, but not so good at reflecting the love and grace of Christianity after 20, 30, or 40 years. Just wonder, is there a biblical foundation for any kind of wrathful words or behaviors from Christians? Uh, well, n no. Uh, I, I think if I'm understanding the, the, the question, if you, well, look, Christianity is not a, a faith that's based upon tenure. Mm -hmm. So for me or anybody to say, well, you know, I've been a believer for 40 years. <laughs> you peon, you just trusted in Christ yesterday. Boy, do you have a long way to go. I could still be a baby Christian if I hadn't grown one whit since the day I trusted in Christ for 40 years, which is a very sad thought. Um, and my concern is that there might be people who this questioner is referring to who say they have trusted in Christ, but Jesus said in Matthew 7, it's, hey, by their fruit, you'll know. Mm -hmm. So if there's not fruit, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithful, self-control, forgiveness, you know, generosity, all that stuff. If there's not fruit coming out of a person who's been a, a supposed Christian for 20 or 30 or 40 years, then I would really question, have they really been a Christian? Have they really trusted in Christ and followed and give, surrendered their life to him? Or did they just say that they had? Um, because the fruit tells everything. It's a good word. It's good. Okay, so most popular question is, tell us about the pastor from Rwanda. Sure. And where did it come from sure. and where can they find it? Sure. So we'll post that on the, the questions, sermon questions, sermon questions, sermon questions today. Questions. There's a little link underneath the podcast. Right, so we'll post that, that piece. It is a piece that uh, I have never seen a name uh, uh, fixed to. I was given it as uh, Pastor Dan was too. When we graduated from seminary, our whole class was given a framed, uh, well, I guess it wasn't framed, but we framed it. Um, that came with our diploma. And at the bottom it said, anonymous uh, pastor from Rwanda. And maybe it said on there, I just did a little snooping around, but my understanding is he died. He would die, he was a martyr for his faith. But that's what he wrote mm. uh, beforehand. So we don't know, uh, at least I've never seen a, a name associated with it, but it's very inspiring. It is, and its, it's words very, live on, right? It's inspiring so many people today so, so as well. It's very yeah. good. So yeah. thank you for your message today. Sure. We're excited. Looking forward to part three. 
next week. We'll see you right back here. Good. And we'll see you back here next week as well. Keep your questions coming. Thank you for joining us for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.